Hello everyone. So we finally have a stable diffusion fork, a stable diffusion model entirely trained on public domain data or copyright free data or opt-in data, which is really, really nice. Like a huge step forward in terms of like ethics or legality of like diffusion models. But you can see here, of course, the quality isn't really that great compared to you know, standard models you'll see uh, of stable diffusion. But it does pose some interesting questions because like a few years back, right? This is the same quality that, you know, DAL E1 had when it was just starting out in its like first version. So maybe, you know, later down the line, may maybe give this like a few years, it would, you know, compare to the ones that we have right now of course there might be some other developments that would help accelerate this training even further just you know beside the data set of opt-in copyright free or uh, public domain we might be even you know sooner than we think to have an ethical ai that does really well you know creates really interesting outputs really creative outputs great paintings at the same time doesn't um, squander the styles of artists or like doesn't unfairly scrapes copyrighted images from the internet or from like other people so this is really really nice believe it or not this is actually the second version you can see the first version over here it's called mitsua diffusion cc0 right now it's called mitsua diffusion 1 and you can see um, it's a notice here that it's already deprecated. It's only slightly worse compared to Mitsua Diffusion 1. Here, this is um, their quality. You know, before that, this was their quality. Still has, you know, a long way to go. What's interesting is if you actually look at um, what's written here. So this is where they got the images from. Apparently, they're all CC0 or uh, public domain Creative Commons things like that and some are opt-in so some are licensed artworks but um, they were given with permission or like with consent let's actually try and see how it works and try to actually generate some images so i have a working installation of stable diffusion right here and i just chose the model if you don't know anything about it and you want to install it yourself please make sure to leave a comment so i know to make a video on how to install this yourself. For text to image, let's say beautiful landscape, scenery, grassy field, cloudy sky, dog running. To generate some. These are, these are all just, you know, default settings. So the CFG, the sampling, they're all the same. Whoa, okay. So it has some capability with photographs. I've tested this before and yeah, in general, it can create more photograph looking images rather than artistic looking images so let's see if we add oil painting to the prompt if that changes anything or actually before doing that i want to see more of this so let's crank the batch size up to four see what it looks like quite interesting actually so i think these are like high contrast images and i think what's happening is there's a bit of like edited photo feel right so i feel like they might have gotten some high quality photos like from unsplash and stuff i'm not really sure let's check the model card a uh, flicker so they got images from flicker of course high quality images and i think that's about it that's all that's all about what i can see or like understand i don't really know the other ones all i know is these are from of course museums and galleries Okay, let's add oil painting. Okay, it's slightly better, right? It's slightly artistic. You can definitely see the textural elements of what makes this, you know, a great oil painting. But instead of changing the style, let's try to use different subjects. Say, dog running around, cyberpunk city. Okay, um, you can definitely see it struggle. <laughs> these don't look like anything these don't look anything like dogs it's really blurry it's like a motion blur thing um let's stop let's kind of delete 
the running around aspect but it's still quite interesting it knows a bit of buildings but it doesn't really know cyberpunk and i'm assuming it's because of the data set you know you don't really see cyberpunk in museums in Flickr, things like that so it generally knows that it's kind of like a city or like an urban setting and they still don't look like dogs at all but you know the composition the colors are still quite interesting actually you know so maybe you can use it for things like that where you're kind of looking for compositional inspiration um if you really don't want to use like standard stable diffusion models where it's trained on copyright data but yeah quite interesting i guess for a last test let's try portrait of a woman by van gogh let's see how it looks wow would you look at that so it's like it's kind of done a really good job uh, of creating a portrait in the style of van gogh but of course the faces aren't that good and i think that's what's also um its strength where if you want more surrealist art pieces uh, more abstract you know art pieces um mitsuo diffusion is definitely an, an interesting addition to your workflow if you're like a surrealist or abstract painter but if you want say more representative art where you want to you know portray a face an object or like a building and you want to have the details be as concrete as possible and i think you'll have much value here using this model and i'm assuming since we have van gogh here since van gogh's paintings are featured all around the web as well as you know in museums it has a lot of data from van gogh to make you know better decisions on how it looks like but compared to say more com contemporary artists like carla ortiz you won't really have you know much resemblance to that artist because you know one it's not on the data set and two it's not featured in public domain images at all since you know um, she's a professional artist her works won't be seen in any libraries or galleries and stuff but yeah still quite interesting i'm assuming this works the same way for dali salvador dali okay um i don't see this as strikingly dali but it's it's kind of there like i i can see it but it's not uh, bearing a strong resemblance to his work let's try john christian leyendecker all okay, right so um these aren't strikingly john christian leyendecker as well but at least they have some bit of aesthetic like compared to just having portrait of a woman in there i assume so so if we completely remove it i'm assuming we'll get less artistic results and like more generic looking photos oh wow no so apparently if you use portrait it already knows that you're kind of looking for something artistic so i guess there's that and some of these faces aren't all that bad like i've definitely seen worse but yeah um you're going to need a lot of work to like redraw those eyes and um other features but yeah in general um i think you could you know have some use for this but i don't recommend it for faces like or like expressive faces specifically but you know for these i guess it's okay um i don't recommend it for limbs or any organic living thing actually like dogs or um you know poses of the human body um you're gonna have nightmare fuel for that but for landscapes and scenery urban settings i guess this it works the same way with if you think about paintings in the renaissance area so buildings around that time like greek paintings i'm assuming mitsuo diffusion has knowledge of greek buildings or architecture those kinds of subjects and concepts i'm assuming mitsuo diffusion has more knowledge in therefore it can create those paintings better compared to other subjects oh wow you look at that yeah definitely but yeah it's not you know it's not as high quality as detail but you know we're getting there we have something it's a 
really nice. It's a really great step in the right direction in terms of legality. But the other one that I'm more interested in is image to image. So I'm gonna put my painting over here and let's see if it can kind of add to it, right? So let's add man, king, wood cart, eat food, um, house, oil painting. And let's see how it um, does if I used an input image of my painting. Oh, okay. Uh, it's definitely a bit more photographic, like, which I don't necessarily want. I added oil painting. Let's see a bit more. And right now I have the denoising strength high. That means it's going to change it quite drastically. So it's not going to respect the input image at all. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely... It definitely has that like photographic feel to it. It's like the perspective is taken from a camera, but if you look closely, the textures feel like an oil painting. That's how I, how I see it. So it doesn't have uh, enough knowledge of either. It doesn't have enough um, knowledge of oil paintings and knowledge of what a street food, street cart look, um, looks like and it can't combine those two seamlessly but if we turn down the denoising strength to maybe say 0.2 let's see what we'll get all right so now you can see it's definitely respecting my painting more but yeah it's definitely adding more photographic elements to it which i don't necessarily want that's not my style but if that's your style then maybe you know this is great for you the faces aren't photographic at all but you know, these objects, like these textures on the food, it turned it into chicken, turned it into chicken nuggets or something. It definitely has quite interesting details over there. And yeah, I, I don't see myself using this a lot, but if you do want to use it, I feel like the most valuable thing that you can get out of this is generating some background images or like background textures or like you know we know you know how when you're drawing a bookshelf for example or a room and you can't like you can't visualize what else is inside the room like you can't visualize the boxes the books the things and stuff laying around ai seems to have much more affinity to that like adding more stuff to an existing area what I mean by that is, say, let's generate something again at 0.57. You can see it added a lot of stuff in like a cooking sense, right? And if you're thinking about, if you're struggling to add those stuff, like more food, more pots and pans, but you don't necessarily want a lot of detail in them, then yeah, uh, AI can definitely help you in that regard, like filling in background details or like filling in just background noise to fill in the space and not necessarily have a lot of effort in thinking about what each area is what each object is uh, other than that i don't see myself using this quite a lot but anyway if you come this far make sure to leave a like and if you want to see more videos like this one make sure to subscribe and if you want me to show you how to use stable diffusion inside Krita. make sure to click here where i discuss all about that as well as installing it and as always thanks for watching bye bye